Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and back on the 4th of April, I placed an order for something that I saw in a video. It was something that I asked someone to make for me, and they never actually did make it, even though I knew they had the capability of making it. So I ordered this, and it was from the UK, and I'm just amazed that it got here so quickly. Today is the 16th I believe <laughs> um, but this is how it came I'm not going to show the other side because the address information is on there but it came up packaged real real tight like this lots of tape so that it would not get damaged I guess um, I'm going to show you what I got Let's see if I can get it out of the packaging here So, I mean, I've ordered things from people in the U.S. Um, that take longer than this to get to me. <laughs> um, and I know this was something that was ready to ship because it they shipped it out like minutes after I ordered it. I got the notification that it had been shipped. Let's get this out of the way. Um, what this is... I was watching Yvonne Preston, I think her name is, on YouTube. I'll leave a link to the video below. Um, and she makes junk journals and different kinds of journals. And I really enjoy doing that as well. And I have so many journals just sitting around partially complete. <laughs> because the part that I don't like about them is actually sewing the um, or stitching the binding. So, I'd seen these on Pinterest and a few other places. And it's called a Journal Punch Cradle. And what it is, it's this wooden thing. I'll put a picture here of what it looks like assembled. So, that is what I have here. Now, I wanted something that was made out of a much thicker wood, that, which is why I asked someone to make it for me. But maybe once they see this, they'll be more inspired to go ahead and make it. I'm not sure how sturdy this will be. It seems like it should be sturdy, but I don't know. It kind of looks like it's made out of particle board. And I guess if you don't apply too much pressure when you're punching, that it would work but it's a very reasonable price I thought it was an excellent idea something that's pretty easy to put together I hope um, and yeah it shipped really quickly the name of the company I'll link all of the information below um, but it's Fernley Designs is the name of the company and I mean, immediately after I saw her use this on in the video, I went straight to their website and ordered it. I was just like, I need that. I'm done waiting. And I need to finish some of these journals that I just have laying around. So these are the pieces that it comes in. Being that I know what it's supposed to look like, I don't see any kind of directions or anything. Maybe there's something on the website. I don't know. But I think I kind of know what I need to do. So I'm just going to do it. When I'm ready to actually put this together permanently, I will use a wood glue. And I know she did mention that you should use a very good quality wood glue for this but I just kind of want to do a quick assembly to show you <laughs> what it looks like if I can do it without the pieces continuing to fall off I don't think I'm going to be able to do it <laughs> but you get the idea the pieces go together like this Ugh. this is not working out the way I intended I'm just gonna slide that on there and this is um, this is the a5 version I think they also offer a 
uh, A4, which is similar to letter size version as well. Yeah, I should have done these pieces first. So, but I figured A5 was big enough for me. I don't think I'll be making books um, much bigger than that. And A5 is similar to half letter or a regular letter size piece of paper um, folded in half. Okay, so let's see if I can flip this over without it coming loose. Again, this is supposed to be glued together, so I'm just trying to do a quick assembly here to kind of give you a general idea of what it looks like. And I put this piece in wrong, of course. So let's flip it around. Do it the right way. There we go. Maybe if I had turned it upside down to begin with, I'd have had an easier time. Okay. So, all I would do is actually glue this together. So, this is how it goes. Eh, I guess it's sturdy enough. I don't put, put too much pressure on it. Okay, so I'm back and this is actually glued together. Um, it was really simple to glue together and the glue worked well. I used this Elmer's wood glue. I went to Ace Hardware and asked for wood glue and this was the only type of wood glue that they had and he said it was good and that it was strong. So, um, Hopefully it will hold and I did like the instruction. I did find a video with instructions and I'll link that below also and the instructions suggested to leave one side unglued so that if you wanted to do a book that was bigger than this which I really think this that could be a little cumbersome to try to do but if you wanted to do something bigger you had that alternative. And I'm thinking that I like this so much that I will probably order another one or to, as a backup or maybe just order the other size that they have. So I actually have this um, junk journal that I put together months ago and it's just been sitting on my shelf. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do the punches poke the holes and put this one together for you I may want to do a little to the cover make a few minor changes or put a different cover on this but I will come back and do the pokey holes and sew it together so you can see how to do it okay I'm back to stitch this um, journal together so these are templates to show you where to saddle stitch or stitch a journal and I have them in a variety of sizes they're available in the shop at Scrap Craftastic and for this I'm using the standard size and this is the journal that I'm going to stitch um, I did go ahead and make some changes to the cover. I reinforced the cover so it's double cardstock and it's fused together. And I also used lace on the spine as you saw, so it's pretty sturdy. And here I'm just putting the template inside the very center of the journal and I'm going to take this mechanical pencil and poke it through the little holes that I have in the template. And I'm doing this so that I can see where I need to poke my holes with the awl or pokey tool, whatever you want to call it. So I've got my three marks made. 
and I'm gonna put my template up so that I don't lose it. I keep them all on this uh, book ring. And these are my alls. I have the big ball one. I don't like to use that one too much because if you punch too far, you have a giant hole. And I like the, the width of the thin one, but it's a little flimsy. It's not as sturdy as the other one. And then I also have another one that I'm, I think I just reached over to get. And it's a Tim Holtz version. I think I got it from Michaels. I may have ordered it on Amazon, but they do um, sell those in Michaels as well. I'm not sure which one I got it from, but I also like this one too because you can kind of gauge how deep you want your hole to go or how how wide you want your hole to be. So, but I wanted to try the flimsy one first just to see how easy it would be. And actually, it was so much easier than I thought. I was thinking that it didn't even go through the paper, so I'm just pushing and pushing and pushing. And it went through and I didn't even realize it, so it worked really well with the cradle. So here I'm just doing the other remaining holes and it looks like I'm pressing down a lot, but I'm really not. Um, I have neuropathy still in my fingers. It's getting better, but I still have it. And I also have an issue with my hands cramping right now. So I'm trying to be careful so that I don't end up with a cramp. So it's why it looks like I'm really pushing on the awl, but I'm not. And then I did the last hole. Now I'm going to grab my needle and thread. I'm actually using what they're called, well, what they called on Amazon as a waxed linen thread. I'm not sure that it's linen. It is waxed and it is a flat thread. Um, that flatness of it, even though it's nice and sturdy and it's waxed, it makes it difficult to get through the small holes. But I really like the quality of the thread so I'm going to use it because I have it. Here I'm just measuring out a little more than two lengths of the book just to make sure that I have enough to stitch it. You don't want to get halfway through and figure out I don't have enough thread. So I'm going to start in the center and I really should have went to the top but I went to the bottom. It was late at night when I recorded this and I was tired. <laughs> So I struggled a little bit to get things the way I want it, but it came out in the end. And here I'm just pulling the needle through. Also the lace on the spine, even though it reinforces the spine, it does make it a little more difficult to get the needle through the spine with that flat um, string, I guess. So here I'm just coming up again. Finishing up my stitching, making sure that my stitches are laying properly and I kind of wanted to see how they're going to lay because the center of that lace trim has a string of pearls in it so I just wanted to see which side it was falling on as far as the pearls. And here I'm coming up again through the center. And that was really tight to get that flat thread through there. Um, and so I'm really pulling. <laughs> that center hole was really tight and I finally got that through and I'm going up through the other one so that I can come back through to the inside and tie it off. And here I'm just kind of making sure that everything is in the right, as far as the string is in the right place and I don't have anything tangled up. So I had to go through the inside again to see where my hole is because I couldn't tell because again the lace um, had it hidden. So. so I'm just pressing that needle on through and once I get that through again making sure nothing's tangled up but once I get that through then I'm gonna go ahead and start tying it off 
checking make sure everything is in order back there you have to keep checking when you're working with um, thread like this and so now I'm deciding how I want to um, tie it off and making sure that everything is laying flat so I'm going to go up under the other stitch and bring the thread back around before I knot it and then I want to learn some different knots. Um, I probably do certain knots and don't realize what they're called. So, but anyway, I just did a basic knot here. Um, and just make sure that everything was nice and secure and tight. I didn't pull too tight because if you pull too tight, you will rip the paper. So just tight enough to make sure that the um, journal doesn't come apart and see I'm just checking the tightness of the strings there or the thread however you want to call it and doing that double knot and I always like to leave the extra strings just in case I decide to put some embellishments on I may or may not if I decide not to then I just can easily come back and trim them but I like to leave them long to start and I always put my needle away right away because I lose things so I don't want to lose a needle so here I'm just taking a look at it tying it up just to see how it looks right now there's nothing in here it's just the papers that I chose to make the journal I will be going back in and embellishing it so I left plenty of the ribbon so that either it can be wrapped around the journal and tied or if the journal gets really fat you still have enough room to close it So that's how you use the journal punch cradle. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.